Good morning. So in my last uh, couple of videos, I was working on uh, playing with uh, Wales App Builder um, and trying to get a flat pack working, um, which I kind of succeeded at. Um, I managed to help um, a person who was asking how to do it um, in, get, in getting a flat pack built um, using their local binary that they built. Um, and then I progressed to um, creating a flat pack that uh, built the project before packaging it. However, I, not, I remembered, not remembered, I realized afterwards um, that I made a mistake in the way that um, I was building the, uh, the flat pack which supposedly built it from source. We'll come down in a second. Um, so I'll show you, yeah, I'll show you what I mean. So at the moment, um, let's get to the project. We have, um, if I, if I just build it, You can see that it's, um, it's getting all the dependencies together. Um, uh, but that's because I've cleaned out the dependencies beforehand. Um, and now it's packaging it all up uh, as a binary. Um, so I now have in the build, just check there. I have a binary. And if I run that, oops. It does the do. So that's a binary version of the project, all packaged up in a binary, which is great. Now for the flat pack, um, we have uh, this manifest file. Um, and you can see what I had to, ended up doing. That's just the right one, yeah. Um, that's, yeah. Um, was installing the SDK uh, extension for Golang. And then I did a Go build instead of Wales build. Um, so that worked simply because I added in the full Go dependencies um, in the vendor directory. And Go build, we use that instead of going off to the internet to get them um, because the pack, flat pack builder does not allow build tools to go get their own dependencies. So you basically have to have all the dependencies in place before you can build your binary or whatever it is you're building, um, which is a bit of a pain. Um, I'm not quite sure why they do that. I can understand why they block various things at runtime, but why you block a build tool from getting its dependencies if those dependencies are going to then be uh, sandboxed on runtime, I don't know. Um, anyway, um, so all we actually managed to do was uh, build the, the Go binary and accidentally, we already had what's in there. Yeah, we already had the build stuff ready to be included. And if I show you that in here, what happens is um, the go application, embeds the JavaScript and the CSS into the binary. And we just so happen to have had it available when I did the flat pack build. So it's in there. Uh, so 
there's a little bit of a problem when it comes to trying to generate all the dependencies for this because we're now needing um, to create a node modules um, and node modules is large there we go. <laughs> can't even see it in there because of the colors are wrong but we've got a whole ton of dependencies that come in so again like in the go side of things you don't want to be itemizing those into your manifest into your uh, flat pack builder you do not want to have some whopping great big manifest here with all these different sources coming in and being placed into the right place so that npm install has them there and doesn't have to do anything and that, i've had a quick look um let's see where it is uh, docs flatpack.org we look for um yeah node extension dun, dun, dun. Where is the one there's the one electron when you're building an electron application, which is similar to Wales, obviously Wales is a lot more lightweight. Um, it doesn't bundle in Chrome, it uses WebKit. Um, but um, there's this guide in the Flatpak docs as to how to build an electron application. Um, and it talks about, so you need the extension. Um, so you, I, if I were to be doing this myself, I would need to also include the node extension. Um, I would also then need to get together the dependencies because it will not allow NPM to go get them and solve them. So you get to the point, um, where does it say? Yeah, so in this bit here, it says, by default, Flatpak Builder doesn't allow build tools to access the network. This means that tools which rely on downloading sources will not work. Therefore, Node.js packages must be downloaded prior to running the build. Setting the electron config cache environment variable means that these will be found when it comes to the build. So that's obviously electron specific, that last sentence. Um, but basically, you need to have all your dependencies somewhere in a cache um, and available um, before the build will actually succeed. Um, which is kind of nuts if you're trying to have um, a CI based build system, uh, because you, you basically have to have either some prior process, which goes off and gets all the dependencies and puts them in the right place, and then calls the flat pack builder or you have to, as I accidentally did in the previous video, uh, bundle some of your dependencies in the repo so that they're checked out. Um, or you need to do as per here, generate um, a compressed version, it looks like, um, of the used dependencies. Um, and bundle them or place them somewhere. Um, so they've got here, they've got this uh, script, um, a Python script, uh, which you're supposed to run, which analyzes the dependencies and spits out a JSON file uh, full of um, encoded uh, dependencies. And it's, it's kind of a bit nuts to be honest. I'm not sure why they went this way. I think they've gone a little bit OTT on the um, security here. Um, why Flatpak doesn't allow build tools to get their dependencies based on their own version in and so on. I don't know. So basically the last, the little bit that I did at the end of my last video, I think was the wrong way of going. Um, I think what I should do is play to the strengths of Wales, 
which is that it produces a nice binary file. Um, and so if you want to then deliver that as a flat pack, um, you're probably best off um, just bundling the binary um, because the flat pack um, runtime has all the dependencies that you really need, such as the web kit and so on. Um, so I think I'm going to switch up the flat pack manifest so that all it does is goes get uh, goes goes and gets the binary from uh, GitHub. Say so, uh, we could have it in a release. I think that's probably the way to do it. So, because I did uh, get hard. Did I go? Okay. So we have a version here that I pushed out. Um, so what I think I should do is actually create a binary and release it and then um, test a flat pack using that for its download. Let's have a crack at that. So, um, I have just built the binary, haven't I? So, what should we do? We should probably tar it up. Uh, I wonder if we should have a make file here. Yeah. This could get repetitive if I'm going to be testing. Yep, so what have we got? Um, yeah, okay. Let's, let's create a make file in here, I think. Do, 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 do. Nothing there. Okay. I probably haven't got any helpers in here. Yes. Well, we'll just do a super simple. Um, so what we're going to do, we are going to make a Wales. This is when I should have just called this Wales test instead. Something like that. Um, should I just do that? Rename it? Start from scratch? No, we'll just carry on. Earl's flat pack. So we're going to call this tar.gz. Um, and we're going to depend on build this flat pack. And it should be just tar. CZVF and now I don't know I don't know make file enough. It's been a long time. What's the uh what's the one for the dependency? The build can't remember. Let's go to the docs. There we go. That'll do. How to use Mick Automatic variables and using variables. Okay. There we go. That one. That's the target. What's the difference there then? So, all right, okay. All 
Right, so I probably want to use that as well. So I'm going to be tiring a file called that. And I want to use all these, although I only have the one, so I could do that. I could use just the one prerequisite instead of all of them. What's the difference there? Oh, I see. Yeah, OK. All oh, right, no, actually, I need that. Right, so that's the newer ones, and that's all the prerequisites. Yeah, because I am doing a tar file in this instance. OK. That's fair enough. OK. So we're creating this from yeah, that. That's right, isn't it? Yep. So we now have a Wales flat pack dot Um let's make sure that's okay. Nothing there. Tar XBF. Ooh. Why? Oh, mind you, I don't want to have the build in there anyway. That might be part of the problem. Yeah, I don't want to do that anyway. I want to strip the first. I want to strip the first thing, um, which is. Gotta find that now. I never never strip the first things. I could just move it, I guess, and then Do, 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 do. Okay. No. Oh, there we go. So just strip components. Does that work on? Let's try it. Just need to clear now, clean now, don't I? I haven't had my coffee this morning. Again.
Okay, did that work? Yeah, good, right. So we're slowly going to build and make file as we go along as well. Might be handy. <clears throat> so, um, So if you're doing it this way, where do you put your options? Can I do a double in here then? Strip components equals oops one. But that doesn't work. We'll see. So we're good there. So if I just uh, this, so. oh, I didn't when I did the temp stuff. I wasn't doing a C, was I? Hmm. Okay. Right. It didn't strip it. Okay. So I need to work out what the hell. How you strip on input. Yeah. Get our old stack up there. Right. Oh, I should be afterwards. Right, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I could just CD into it. <laughs> hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm, okay. Looks like minus C. Changed Dutch before performing any operations. That doesn't. I'll try that. So in theory, so can I do minus C build? Yeah, that's difficult. I want to take... Can I strip? Kind of getting um, a bit diverted here. I don't really care, but... What's the way to do that? I've not done that before. With make files, can I say, but just give me the binaries? Hmm. Okay. Large parts and the power of the So if I uh, 
extract that. We have the binary. Cool. Just to make sure, let's see what was going on with that. Temp, so I will do next VF. Let's just do it explicitly this time. There we go. Wales flat pack. Good, and I should be able to just, can I run that from temp? Yes, good, right, okay. That's fully working. Right, okay, well we got there in the end, so we have, um, we have a way of building a tar.gz and we should basically finish off that make file I think um, So, build Rails flat, oops, flat pack. We're going to have a whole bunch of dependencies there. Um, just call that source. And that will be Rails build. Um, so source now, I don't really want to go itemize them all. In fact, I want actually, I'm just trying to work out, remember what type I want. Um, Oh, I know where I've done done this before. Where did I do? I did that in. Oh, I did that in. Um, My old project I've got to make for, haven't I? Oh, I've got a bit OTT on there doing sub dire stuff. Don't need that yet. But, um, on the go server. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll do a world cat uh world card. Yeah, it's probably worth doing that. <laughs> okay, now that we're doing it. Yeah.
Right, so at the moment, I think the only go source we've got is the main. So we'll do that for the moment. Um, and we'll actually call that backend. We have content, which is going to get a bit gnarly. Um, doo -doo -doo. We've got source. So I think well, I might be able to nick that from here as well. <laughs> yeah. There's a few things there. Let's take. Oh, we'll just take it all for the moment. So we will have, what have we got first? We have nothing in here. Well, the package.json can remain, but we don't have any JSON at uh, J JavaScript. At the, oh, we do have the roll up. Okay, so we'll keep that. In the public, we have, well, potentially index HTML. So anything in there, basically. Although that could be a bit of a problem. Oh no, it's fine because I'm um, looking for dots. Good. Okay. Uh, and then we've got source. Again, components is good. We have anything with a dot in there. So that's that covered, that covered. Um, at the moment, I don't have any JavaScript sub stuff that's bound to happen though and I'm not how am I gonna do roots but I'm not here I mean not in this one am I and we're not doing that either not this little sample so I think because this is just a little mini thing I can get rid of that as well. So the only things that would change at the moment, potentially components, uh, these may, um, package.json, and JavaScript, yeah, the log file changes. We also want to catch that too. And then the public. Okay, that's fine. Okay. All right. So then we just need to do the buildy build. Um, Yeah. Now I don't need to do that because Wales takes care of that.
So I think we should be good there. And that should be excluded in theory. Okay. All right, so I need now prefix all these things with front end, I guess. That should do it, shouldn't it? Okay. And I think that's covered everything here. All right, well, yeah, I want to do a clean all. I'll take that as well. Yeah, that could be handy. Okay, so I need to do my actual dependencies for, for this. Uh, which is simply going to be back end and front end source and when we do that in theory we do when it's built okay Okay, now I need to make sure don't try and create a clean or clean all. Do want to create one of them? We do want to create one of them, but we don't want to create either of these. They are phony. Okay. And I don't need an all because this is the thing I want to create at the moment. And I'm explicitly not creating a flat pack um, output either because um, that's going to be something you do off on another server eventually. All right, then we're good. So make clean. We just have a make file. Make. Mm. Oh, yeah. OK. Didn't do the full clean, did I? I need to also oh. build yeah. Okay, so that's cleaning out. The two main targets. So 
So if I do a make, it has to build it first. Good stuff. It's the same size, that's good. Right, cool. All right then, so now back to business, flat pack. All right, well, let's do this in stages then. Um, need to write that, hopefully. Is, yeah, I need to add that to the ignore just in case. Interesting. Which ones? Ah. Uh, well, I'm actually going to take that out soon. So we'll leave that for the moment. Come back to that. Make this off. Let's make file. That creates. said that'll do for the moment eh? yeah keep it safe what Oh, okay. Ah. That's because I created a uh, readme. Upon uh, GitHub. Go about that. So in theory we can, there's nothing outstanding is there, no changes, Colin's a bit wrong there, alright so now I should be able to push. Okay, alright so now we're back up to scratch, okay so Get up. Okay. Right, let's call this um let's tag it. We have a release now. So we have a building binary that we are ready to release and we have a target. So let's do this. Let's do tag here. Um, new tag. I will call this 0 0.1. Yeah. I 
think. Yeah, that'll do. Push that up. Oh, I didn't. That did not have. That's what I need. Thank you. Okay, releases. Nothing there. Draft new release. Choose a tag. We'll have that. Thank you very much. And attach a binary. Come on. Oh, I should have been, I should have named it with a version, but okay. at least it's easy uh, to find out what it is. I should have put a version on it, and I should have put um, um architecture as well for the real thing but this is only a demo thing anyway so okay i don't really care so what we've got here is a binary hosted on github and somehow we need to create a flat pack from that so i'll copy that link Done with the make file. So I want to get rid um, of that. Yep. And I want to stop doing that. That's okay. We have a module which is called the Wales Flatpak. It's going to be simple. It's just going to basically do an install, but I need the source first. So What's the format for that? Do I normally put oh, them here, can I? Presumably, I can do this. It's a bit of a test, actually. <laughs> Archive URL. Um, now this is going to fail because I haven't got a SHA for it. I need some sort of uh, checksum. Um, well, let's see what happens. Um, so I'm actually at the point now where I do want to test making a flat pack and I can't be bothered trying to remember the command lines all the time. So now let's create, um, yeah, I'll call this just flat pack. It's definitely phony. Do not want a that so 
her don't have any inputs either in theory well I guess yeah we do in a way we do have the manifest so we can use that if that changes It doesn't really matter because we don't have an output anyway, so. But anyway, put it there as a dependency so it fails if we don't have it, I guess. That's probably okay. Right, so now I've got to remember the commands. Um, probably the best way to do that is to grab it from here. <laughs> My file dependent might say, yep. And I will need to then do a clean afterwards. Yeah. I do want it as an install as well, so I might need to make that a little bit clearer. Yeah. Let's do that. So I'll we'll call it. Install Mac. just so that we, we know exactly what we're doing here. And we'll call this um, Let's hide it off and we'll call it flat pack temp. What does flat pack normally call its things? Oh, yeah. Dot flat pack builder is what it uses at the moment. That's for its own little bits and bobs. So I'll just call mine flat pack. Let's call it, yeah, and I'll leave it at that temp. So we're going to build it there and it's a dependency. So we can use that. Actually, I only want the first dependency. What was that again? First dependency is... That one. So, I think, okay, and we are doing that, and we want to make sure the dot flat pack temp is clean before we build. Make sure that doesn't fan out. Dot flat pack temp. Okay, so that will not complain now because I've got the minus F if it doesn't exist. Flap pack? Nope. Flat pack. Flat pack builder flat pack temp. Do the thing, do the install. OK. 
Okay. Yeah, okay, I think we're good there. So now I need to actually do this. Make sure this is okay. Right, so this is going to fail. Because of the checksum. But let's have a go. So, I just want to test clean. Because um, I want to make sure there's nothing here. Okay. That's good. And I want to I want to get rid of that as well. Let's do the make uh, let's do the clean all. Get shot out. I want to make sure it's nice and clean before I do anything. And so clean all. Well, that node modules doesn't exist there. It's in front end. Thank you. And we also want to. Uh, do, do, do. Like build get shot out front end public build it's gonna go when we clean. And here, I want to get rid of that and I've done that. What else is around that I really want to get rid of? So we've just got rid of node modules on the front end. We've made sure that, which is a Yeah, so we can get rid of yeah, it's output, that's good. So that's that's a dependency of the binary. So that can go. Node modules if you really want to get clean. Components, that's all good. So source there is fine. All this stuff. No deleting of that, that's all source. That shouldn't even exist now. Okay. Interesting. Oh. oh, I want to get rid of Vendor in a minute as well. Oh, let's do that here then. Now for that, it's a lot easier to do it. Yeah. Because then it's all tucked away and get, right, that's got to go, that's got to go. Where did that come from?
Oh, okay. Good point. I don't need here to do the binding on its own. I can just do build. Get rid of the build, get rid of the public build in there. So it's cleaning out all the objects there. Clean here, modules, modules, here. That should go in a second. That's going to go in a minute. Okay. Make clean. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Deleted all that stuff. Lots of stuff gone now. That's good. It's going to get skinnier. Right. Right, so we're now at the point where we are completely clean, but should be able to do make. So this is like doing all the node stuff and everything. And now we have our dependencies. We've got a build. Yep, we've got the Todd GZ. Um, if I do a make clean and then do a make, fine dependencies are done, they're good, so he didn't have to do that. Builds a go package, does the do again. Make clean all builds gone, targe zed's gone, front end public just has the index and stuff, that's good. So we make again. Has to do the dependencies on the front end. Has to then build. We're good. And I should be able to run build whales back, and it works. Great. Okay. We have a working make file. Now comes the fun bit. So I'm going to make clean. So we don't have any output there. We don't have any binaries or whatever. Um, and now we're going to try and do the flat pack. So make uh, install flat pack, which should fail. Yep. <laughs> no checksum. Okay. What a surprise. So in theory, if I do SHA 256, um, what if I just do some zeros? Uh, 
Now look, it doesn't work. Let's just grab that. Thank you. That's not really a secure way of doing things. You should go off and find it, but I think I trust myself. Do it again. Yeah, right, here we go. So now we need to do the actual, um, we need to f get that file. So if I go into that pack, temp, what have I got? The files. Ooh. Didn't expect that. I expected there to be some sort of uh, rubbish hanging around. Oh, maybe an attempt. No? Huh. Um, so is there no G sets? Should not leave it hanging around anywhere? Uh, okay. All right then. All right then, in that case, what we'll do is we'll see I was wondering, right? How did that ever work? Because there wasn't a Wales flat pack. That's interesting. Anyway, let's do see where that happened. I don't know where that's going. I should have looked at the um. Output. I might have to do uh, another version, which I presume you can do in a debug mode. I'm only doing the V there so that we can see what's what. Right. Okay, let's do make. So it's doing that. Hmm. 
Right, okay. Does it leave it in there then? Flat pack builder. Build. Browse one. And. Where's the files then? Interesting. Why would it not leave something here? There it is. So, is there some sort of magic for how you're supposed to know how to get those downloads? I know what the hell I'm supposed to do with these things. I wonder is there a file just anywhere huh no of course not That's just a simulink. So there's nothing here. How am I supposed to find
Ah, okay. So I need to do that. <laughs> but set to zero because I've already done it. We'll see if that works. So because I helpfully strip the path from when I do the tar, so it's just a binary that you get in, because um, I don't really want to be having uh, use build or create something where it's binary name, binary name for a path. Um, the flat pack by sounds thing always expects that a tar has a path, at least a one path in it. Let's see if that makes a difference. So. Uh, we'll just do make it stop. Nope. Oh, of course, I don't need to do that anymore. So apparently, you already because it already does it. So. Which makes sense. I thought it did. I was just it was just weird that it wasn't working, but that strip components makes makes it clear now. So there we go. Okay. So in theory that's worked. Um Let's do a right, let's do a terminal session that I've definitely not used. We'll just use name terminal. Um let me do flat pack run from dot enm jones. Oh, it's not gonna autocomplete dot wells flat pack. Okay, now what we don't know is whether that's because I have previously installed it or not, because it's been there a while now. Um, yeah, so I've got a bunch of stuff installed now. Include that. So I think. Um, if I look at, I think I can remove it completely. Um, so that'll be a good test. So if I do a flat pack help, is it remove or uninstall? Let's try it. Uninstall. Nope. Remove. Okay. Oh, so you have to do dash dash help to you. Right. Uninstall. Okay. See, I didn't even read that. <laughs> right, so yeah, so I am working on a user one, so I want to do that. I'll try both actually, I'll just do a thing like new files if you find in delete data. That's what I want. Okay, I want to make sure it's completely gone. So, flat pack. Uninstall. Um, 
delete data comdataengines.fails.flat.fac. Proceed with these changes. Yes, I want to remove that. Thank you very much. Delete data from yes. Delete data from yes. Must have been two instances then. Well, it's gone now. Just try and run it. No, it does not exist. Yay. Okay. So, make clean all. We have nothing. We have no flat pack artifacts there. We have no builds artifacts, even in front end. Nothing. Clean. Squeaky. Um, so I should be able to do make install flat pack and it's going to get the binary from GitHub. You don't have to worry about local stuff. Da -da 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 -da. Exporting, doing the thing. Done. Okay, go here, list, it's in, we have it, and run, and it works, cool, good stuff. All right, I think we're done. We're just in time, I think, as well. Yep. Right, uh, let's commit this off then. So, getting rid of all the vendor stuff. Because we now don't need any of that. Updating the flat pack manifest. Have a make file. Oh, unversioned files. What have we got? Ah, okay. That's right. I need to exclude that. And I need to take that out. And I do want to do that. So I think we're good on there as well now. again so we have all the vendor stuff get ignore vendor 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 manifest make file lots of vendor stuff now long no longer in repo which is good good stuff Okay. 
Um, this change will build flat pack from it. Hello. Good. Oh well. That's good to um get that down to something that's usable. Probably actually don't even need that anymore. Let's try that. So in theory, all we need is the the binary. And we just need to make sure that when it's running, it can talk to the window manager. The actual application doesn't do anything with network or anything at the moment, doesn't do any other device check-in, doesn't do any audio, so I haven't had to add any of those arguments, any of those permissions. But to actually just get the flat pack and run it, all I need is to download the binary, which is tarred. So let's try that. Um, let's clean out again. It's definitely gone. It's not there. I'll try and run it. Doesn't work. Make clean all. None, nothing there. Make install flat pack. In theory, that just worked without having to do a sources on there. So go here, try and run it. Good. Sorted. Okay, so that's the last check in then. Let's change. We'll remove on it um, source from pack test. done Oh well, there we go. So we finally get that got there in the end. Um, it's a shame that um, Flatpak's Flatpak Builder doesn't allow you to actually use build tools to do their job, to get their dependencies. Um, it might be an interesting exercise to do a version of this in Snap because I'm pretty sure that I can get its dependencies. Um, I've not used Go in that, um, so that'll be an exercise. Um, 
maybe worth doing it and maybe I might, might have a go in the next video just trying to see how that compares to the flat pack because that was kind of painful flat pack um but anyway i've got something basic working there um so that's good so if you ever release a nice tight little binary and you want to release it as a flat pack you can use a simple manifest like that uh, so uh thanks for watching um and until next time take care